So uh, we're on uh, on our way. This is uh, the director Sam. Uh, Hi. And uh, where are we headed? What's uh, what's the plan right now? All right. So we're going to an abandoned farm, and we're going to do a flashback scene with Lloyd here, and he's uh, telling a story about. Uh, a bunch of soldiers. And then after that we're going to uh, a state park to have him fishing. Now do you have to get permits for these locations? Or? Um, no, we just sort of fudge it, you know. And uh, I pretty much know everyone in town, so it's never really been a problem. So basically it's about a uh, guy who's depressed and he's going off into the woods to kill himself. And then he realizes he can go find the devil. So he's going to find the devil to give him his soul. And throughout it he has fla fa flashbacks about his father and that's played by you, Lloyd. What's the uh, budget? Uh, it'll probably be around from somewhere between 3,000 and 5,000 once everything's all said and done. And um, how uh, is this a short film? I know it's a feature. How would you describe the uh, influence of trauma in this movie? Um, I mean, definitely in the way that uh, we we're able to get it all together, and then just in in the musical scenes too. I don't think we would have musical scenes if it wasn't for Poultry Geist or Cannibal the Musical. So uh, this is the uh, the limo. And uh, this guy driving, are you a professional actor? Or? Oh, not at all. <laughs> What's your name? It's Mike Katniss. Mike what? Katniss. How do you spell it? It's K C A T A N E S E. And um, so you're, uh, you look like you might be a chemical engineer. Is that true? Did you know? I am, actually. And uh, Wait, why? Really, how did you know? What, uh, what uh, brought you into this movie, Mike Kat well, I have Katniss? I've known Sam for, for years now. And he's always been aspiring to be a filmmaker, so he's needed some talent, and I've been all too willing to provide it. And your so friendship is what uh, it's not the big uh, paycheck. Oh, I get a big paycheck, but friendship mostly is what uh, does the trick. So uh, another lesson: uh, <clears throat> when you make your own damn movie, have a good support group, and make sure you put them in gay clothing, like Sam. Is very gay in his Did you say there was nudity in this movie? Uh, we tried to get nudity, but it didn't come together. What happened? Um, well, the actress was sort of unwilling to do that. Didn't you audition her ahead of time to make sure? Didn't you read my book? Yeah, I did. I didn't. Uh, I don't know. It didn't quite pan out. So you shot, you auditioned her, and she was uh, agreed to do nudity, and then it came the big day, and what happened? Well, she said she was open to it, and I. Uh, I was like, oh, that sounds good, but then, I don't know. No, it was fine, though, in the end, we just um, decided that not to do it, or she decided not to do it. And uh, one more question, beautiful uh, Catherine. What, uh, what is, uh, what are you, how did you, how are you associated with this film? Are you a camera person, or? No, well, I, um, I'm only up here for like a few days, you know, and it's just, since I'm Sam's you just, girlfriend. What, you, uh, you what? I'm Sam's girlfriend, we've been together for a while. Oh. So, um. I'm just helping out, like I've always... Glad I found that out. out. Oops. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Excuse me. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Good thing I found that out early in the game. I've been filming, you know, both the big movies like Gamer, with uh, which is a big uh, movie with uh, Jared, uh, whatever his name Butler. is. Butler. Yeah. Jared Butler. And then, but most of the movies I'm in are very small films. Mm -hmm. But usually an interesting lesson comes out of each one of these uh, movies. Don't uh, bring open peanut butter and jelly sandwiches into bear country. What's going on with that gun? Well, we actually brought Lloyd Kaufman here to uh, dispose of him. <laughs> I'm ready. Just let me put it in my mouth and maybe Catherine, could you pull the trigger? Absolutely. Thanks. Okay, let's go. Well, this is very beautiful. But I've noticed this yeah. beautiful boom pole. Oh yeah, that's yeah, it's good for a boom pole. You can just grab any sort of walking stick or bamboo sticks work really well for that. But the important lesson here is to always keep the cables really uh, well cleaned up and everything. Otherwise, they become a gigantic tangled mess like this. And then uh, is this cleaned up or is this no, the this, tangled mess? Yeah, this this is the bad one. That's a that's no, the no. gigantic tangled mess. Do. Yeah, don't do that because it slows everything down and it just becomes a big hassle. So at the beginning of every shoot, if there's people who haven't used like cables like this before, I always sort of teach them how to roll them up the proper way and keep a lot of uh, twist ties around so they don't um, become like this because this is terrible. What do you mean twist ties? Uh, uh, like the kind of thing you would use on like a loaf of bread, you know? Oh, I yeah. see. So so you, uh, can, so you can have them in uh, rolled up and then 
tie them together so they don't go all over the place. Uh, this reminds me, uh, can we have spaghetti for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just joking, Catherine, just joking. Okay. <laughs> uh, Catherine, uh, Sam says there's an interesting story about the gun. Interesting story about the gun. What is that story? Well, we knew we wanted Mike to be carrying a shotgun around all, the whole time, but uh, everywhere we looked, holsters were like $250 or something, and we didn't want to spend that much money on just a prop that, I mean, it was an important prop, but we didn't want to waste that much money. So I talked to my friend Drew, who's uh, sort of a handyman, and we got this uh, fake leather vinyl, and we got an old belt of his, and we got a cardboard tube that he had laying, laying around, and he glued it all together, and he bolted the belt onto here, and it really sort of works. It looks, I think, really good throughout the movie. And uh, just, I don't know, just, if you ever think you need to buy a really expensive prop, I suggest... Well, wait a minute, let's mm -hmm. look at oh, the, the rifle uh, itself. The rifle, it's so... Aha, uh, uh -huh, look yeah. at that. Oh, yeah, the other yeah. thing, too, is... Wow, tricky, amazing. Tricky. <laughs> Cool. What mm -hmm. is this thing here? Uh, this is a lock to make sure it doesn't shoot anyone, even though there's not any, you know, uh, whatever on it right now. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So we are way, way deep in the woods here. Basically, we're trying to avoid any sort of traffic you might hear on the road or any sort of people who might be coming through. And also back here, there's a lot of interesting things we can get shots of, such as uh, there's some old foundations of homes back here that we're going to be shooting in. It was my pleasure. Cut. How was that again? Action, Mike. And Pan Andrew. What's going on? What happened? Well, w there's something wrong with our uh, cord, and if we don't hold it at the exact right spot, then it just causes it all to be all staticky and get messed up so it's just kind of a matter of balancing it out and so it's this connection moving. here I think so as best as we can determine one of these cords I don't know which one of it is but uh just have to have a level hand and try not to move once we find that perfect sound spot we have to get on it okay Stand up. so you got now John well I did until Andrew equipment a uh, bit of equipment uh, malfunction sound uh, connections not working right but uh, We'll shoot the rest of the movie with a camera very close to people's mouths, and uh, that will solve all the sound problems. <laughs> There's also issues with uh, moving equipment because no matter where you put the equipment, uh, somehow it always ends up in the shot. So. Uh, Best thing is to have all your equipment stored in leaves. So where's the dolly? Where's the oh, dolly? This is it right here, Lloyd. Wow, that's a dolly? Yep. We were able to make it with the PVC pipe for the tracks. The what is dolly. PVC? What does that mean, PVC? Well, they use it for, uh, for plumbing. And uh, it's just plastic uh, tubing, basically, that comes at different, uh, you know. And then the uh, big thing of wood here, and on the bottom, we have skateboard wheels that uh, we put, and we have them turned in on themselves so they can uh, ride on the pipe pretty easily. And it goes really smoothly. The only problem is it's kind of heavy, but it gets really smooth shots, so it looks really nice. And it only cost probably altogether under $100. My friend uh, Drew and I, we looked up a whole bunch of different ways of making this. Basically, go to Google and put in DIY uh, dolly track, and then you can probably start from there. And Drew basically... Uh, took a lot of different things that we found and then combined them together to make the most practical thing for what we were doing. See right here, we have some uh, dowels with electrical tape on them and we stuff them in there and it goes up really close. You wanna see? Yeah, yeah, let's see. It looks like there's a light on it. What, what, what's going on here? Well, it's a nice uh, do-it-yourself light stand that we built. Or my friend Drew actually built it with me. And uh, down, down there at the legs, you can see the legs are all detachable and it's sort of easy to stow away. And we have the light bolted in here, but we can take that out as well. And uh, we have are, some... are, are light stands that expensive? That you Wouldn't the wood cost more than the, just a, getting a light stand? Uh, no, not necessarily. The wood was actually pretty cheap at a 
Lowe's, we got it, so. And my friend needed some wood for a different project anyway, so I helped him out with that. Yeah. We've got uh, our light stand set up since, uh, you know, there's not going to be any light tonight, <laughs> at night. So okay. we've got the light set up to kind of give an effect of like the moon illuminating the scene. We've also got a fire we're building that's going to give a little more uh, light on the face that's going to like <coughs> flicker and uh -huh. just <laughs> create a nice little dancing effect on the, on the face. And what is this location? It looks like somebody's house. Uh, yeah, we're shooting around it. Uh, we've got a nice high angle what's here. What's it supposed to be? It's just supposed to be that. It's just going to be that stone wall. Um, You're it's at the him. Foundation we were yeah, at it's at the foundation that he was at, or oh, that we were at earlier. So yeah. it's, uh, we're faking it that we're at yeah. another location. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and we've actually got the sound working again this time. <laughs> what? Well, how did you fix it? Uh, I untangled everything and then put it back together and now it's working so hopefully it'll stay that way. No, no. This will probably result in <laughs> <laughs> this will result in the burning down of your house of course. Yeah, well Sam tried that about five years ago. So right now we have a uh, gel over the lens rather than gelling the lights and that'll make the whole scene give it a bluish tint. So we've got a three point light setup right here. We got a light right there light over there, and one there. We don't have one behind him, but the big white house there kind of reflects it pretty yeah, nicely. It does. So, uh, it's, it's pretty good. What are you doing out here in these woods? You shouldn't have come here. You shouldn't have come here. No, if you wanted to find him, you shouldn't have come here. No. No story is entirely him. true, but this story, this story almost is. What's the lesson? The lesson? That we've learned today. Uh, drop out of school, make a film. <laughs> and uh, socialism is not all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> you too can live in a refrigerator box, just like Lloyd Kaufman. <laughs> well, so long, folks. You're a very supportive family. I think the most important thing is to have, not only to have people that care about you, but have people that care about the movie too. Because there are a lot of people who want to help you, but they just won't be able to give you the time that you, you actually need. So you need to find, you need to get a select group of people who would be a good actual support group. Because uh, some people say they want to help, and then they just won't actually come through when you need them to. So you just got to assemble a good uh, crew and cast, basically. And once you have that, the loyal people who believe in the movie, then it should actually work out. So uh, here we are in the New Haven uh, train station, Michael and uh, Mr. Sam here, and uh, it looks like it's late at night, and what, uh, I guess we say goodbye, huh? It's uh, 10 o'clock at night, and we had you since uh, about 1 in the afternoon. It was just an awesome experience. We got it all done, which is the most important thing.